Welcome to Extreme Metal Television. I'm your host, Simon. In this episode, we visit 70,000 tons of metal. We have great interviews with God Dethroned, Max Cavalera, and to kick it off, in Sephirum. <laughs> can we expect in the near future from this? Uh, uh, we're gonna re release a new album in four weeks. Oh, I'm so excited. And the funny thing is that <coughs> nobody in our camp really thought about, oh, we could actually have a pre-listening session, pre session here. Sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, but we're now trying to organize it with the signing session. Uh, so... That's what's happening in four weeks. Is it Friday today? Yeah. Yes. It's Friday. Okay, so it's exactly four weeks. Exactly four weeks. And uh, then we're gonna start to shitloads of touring, and summer festivals in Europe, and more touring, and then it's like end of 2016. We've talked about the album that's mm. coming out in four weeks. What went into the album? I mean, like, uh, uh, what was the production like? I mean, did you guys just uh, uh, decide, hey, we've got the melodies, we come all together, uh, put down the tracks. Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we are... I doubt everybody really understand how slow we are with composing it. It's, it's a process of years to make a song. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we might have all the pieces, like uh, on the previous album, I think it was, there was a song called Pohjola. I think uh, the first demo, I remember doing like the first demo vocals to that. I don't know how many years, maybe like seven years earlier or something like that. It, really crazy stuff. But the song just wasn't ready. There were so many little pieces that, yeah, little parts, little melodies that doesn't go so. The flow wasn't there. Mm. Uh, okay, that's like extreme. Usually it takes like maybe three years. It's really fun to make uh, demos when you don't have lyrics. <laughs> and <laughs> because this happened also with the previous album album set uh, if I have like a like a rhythm in my head okay vocals go something like this and here could be like clean chorus or something like that and, and this time we found old porn magazine from like year 85 and uh, 95 and I thought yeah that paragraph is perfect and roar, 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 shouting and uh, when you have those lyrics stuck in your head, it's really annoying. <laughs> Actually, when you're listening to the final song with the real lyrics, you still can hear like uh, <laughs> dirty stuff in Finnish. Well, what can I say about 70,000 tons of metal this year? Brand new ship! If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. If you weren't, you missed out. It was fucking awesome. One of the highlights this year was Jeff Loomis performing with Arch Enemy. Max Cavalera. Max, how's it going? Great. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, Soulfly, uh, uh, and, I mean, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm getting lost here in, in my own self, but tell us a little bit about Soulfly and how it came together and how it came to be into fruition from, from going from Sepultura to Soulfly. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a transition period, you know, because I was 
of course, many years with Simple Tour, I found it, you know, it was, I gave the band the name and, you know, it was, I had a big part in the, in that band, you know, I wrote a lot of stuff for it. For when I left, for the first six months, I didn't do nothing. I was actually very depressed. It was really, really weird, you know. I mean, it's, it, it happens to people that, that, that stuff happens, like Ozzy, you can hear interviews of him when he left Black Sabbath. He just stayed in a room, got drunk and drugged out for three months, you know. Uh, I got kind of like that, you know. So I, I, you know, I use a lot of drugs and drink a lot. And <laughs> for six months, I was depression, man. You know, I didn't want to do anything. It's like, fucking hate everything and everything sucks. And you know. And then finally, you know, I got off my ass and, and with the help of some friends and good people like Gloria, it's like, you gotta continue. You gotta do something. So I picked up my guitar and I wrote first song was I for an eye. And it was it's a great song, you know, it's really kick ass. And uh, you know, from that I said like, all right, let's let's make a band, let's create something new. So I started finding people, I found Roy Mayorga for drums and Marcelo for bass. And I got a guy from Brazil, Lucio, to play guitar and went to the same place that we did Roots and recorded Soul Fly One in in uh, ninety seven. And the rest is history. <laughs> It was a great record. I love the record. I love the energy of the album. It's a lot of people's uh, favorite Soulfly album, you know. And uh, we did weird shit with that record, like we buried the tapes, you know, in the uh, <laughs> in the indigo ranch soil. You know, I wanted to cap the capture the earth forces, so we buried the tapes for for 24 hours and then dig them up, you know, like grave diggers. Yeah, to, to infuse them with some of that earth energy. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was wild, you know, we did a lot of crazy stuff like that, <laughs> and it was cool, man. You know, and then so far it was always moving, always changing, you know, changed a lot of members, you know. Mm. I think this is the most stable lineup we had in a long time because Mark has been with me since 2004, a great guitar player, you know, awesome. Tony, is, this is his third record. Because I just finished making the music for the new Soulfly. Hmm. That's going to be out in August. That's when we got the invitation for this boat thing, was in the studio, making the, the Soulfly 10th record. We were recording in LA with Matt Hyde. And, uh, you know, on the last day of recording, we got this invitation. Let's do it. <laughs> When you started off with Sepultura, with just forming Sepultura, did you ever think that you'd be where you are now and, and be such a such a catalyst for for Brazilian music? No, you never think that, man. You know, like when you're, especially like the beginning, Sepultura, we're just kids, you know. We were just really pissed off because we didn't have money, and we're third world country, really fucked up. You know, we hated the police, we hated the government. And we metal was the the thing that we had that was sacred, you know. That's it's our thing, you know. And uh, when we made Sepultura, there was no. Uh, we were considered the worst band in the world, <laughs> but <laughs> for the first year, everybody that came to see us hated. Man, it was like out of out of hundred people, like three people with the Motorhead shirts, the only people that like it, you know. <laughs> everybody else like, oh, this is just noise. They don't know how to play, which is uh, probably true. We didn't know how to play, and it was everything was out of tune. But it was a beginning, you know. We got better <laughs> with the years, you know. <laughs> and then we made a couple, you know, really special records, you know. And little by little, you know, you become more influential and, and uh, you start seeing your influence in other people and and becoming appreciated. And uh, I don't take it for granted. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I love being a metalhead. I love it, you know, it's my passion. You know, I love listening to new bands, promoting new bands. You know, I love stay connected to the underground. It's one of my favorite things, man. I never lost that passion, you know. And I think that's uh, what keeps me going. What happens when you put one of the most extreme death metal bands on the face of the planet, people in PJs and pillows together? You get a pillow fight mosh pit. <laughs> Thank you.
Gentlemen, tell me a little bit about the reason why you guys decided to uh, do a little reunion tour for this boat because three years later. We ran out of money. <laughs> oh, you just say that, dude. <laughs> no, we're still not out of money. It's unbelievable, but uh, no, we were just bored. We're bored out of a skull. And uh, no, you know, after after a couple <laughs> of years, you just find out you can't live without music. That's basically it, you know. Yeah, that's it. That's the reason. You know, just you think like you had it all. You have seen it. You've, you're done. And then you find out you're not done at all. You just needed a break. Yeah. And when we quit, I didn't know if I needed a break or I, if I should quit. And I thought, like, if I take a break, nobody will leave me in peace and keep asking me to play. So if I quit, at least I know I have my peace. And then <clears throat> after a while, I realized I just needed to play. I just want to play. So here we are. <laughs> So, I mean, is, are there different plans for, for God the Throne? Are you guys going to maybe come up with some more newer music for us? Well, you know, we, we, uh, we started on the World War I trilogy, but we only made two albums, so one's missing. So that's the goal for the near future, to write the, the third album for the World War I trilogy. And we're going to play a lot of festivals in Europe and one in Canada. And we play songs we never played live before. Oh yeah, that's, that's what's happening now yeah. and during these two shows. <laughs> wanted to know what 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 happened like it, it and you answered a question obviously for me and and it, it it's been on a lot of people's minds right it's been on a lot of people's minds and they wanted to know what what happened and, and why why the passion sort of it, it was it wasn't the passion that left it's just it you, you weren't sure right like you said earlier or I was so done. tired I was so burned burned up yeah inside I was just I couldn't deal with it anymore I think, yeah, it was after 22 years of playing that, that I decided that it should be over. And I just didn't have the energy anymore. I just needed to recharge the batteries. <coughs> and um, that went pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, think, you know, I think a lot of people don't. It's, we're, we're good friends, you know. We, we see each other a lot of the time just to hang out and have a beer, you know. And we, we talk a lot about the things, of, of course. So at a certain moment, we were like, you know, getting the energy back. And we were Let's do it again. We never broke up uh, as as, a, as friends, so to say. You know. So, yeah. What did you want to say? <laughs> I was going to say. I think a lot of people don't really realize that, you know, playing in a band for 22 years takes a big toll. And yeah. at, at a certain point, you kind of like maybe there's some other options that I should have done. And you know, before it's too late, let me try them. Yeah. And uh, you know, once you try them, you can at least say like, well, I tried other things and. Yeah. Back to playing metal, you know, and that's exactly what it is because you try to go into a different path in your Trying life. Try to do the normal life, the normal and life, like, Fuck and this. then you find out <laughs> after. Well, I think within a year you realize this is never yeah. gonna work for right. me. Right, exactly. You know, so you know, I, I kind of did the same thing, like yeah. stop playing live, kind of right about when you guys broke up, just coincidentally. Yeah, and uh, I was like, oh, geez, this is yeah, we are going to make use of this. There's no way, uh, <laughs> part no of way life. about it. You yeah. gotta just part of it. life, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a way of life. <clears throat> it's a nice way of life. <laughs> it's yeah, a, nice a rough life, life, but it's <laughs> it's worth it. It comes at a high <laughs> price sometimes, you know. Yeah. Because this is not the type of music. Well, actually, the type of music that we are making is not not the type of music that that makes you extremely rich or something, you know. Well, some bands, but the majority. Even like then, it's like they're just yeah. they're okay. Yeah, they're, they're not okay, like so buying a mansion or anything. People are thinking uh, very simple about it, like, oh, you are playing music, having fun, uh, playing at concerts, and they think uh, we are very rich, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's <laughs> you don't make much even. more than a fast food <laughs> yeah. restaurant, you know, really. Yeah. yeah. But playing on the, this boat means a lot of practicing, a lot of uh, doing. Uh, 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 arranging practice. emails, uh, oh. stuff, everything. <laughs> Drinking beer. <laughs> yeah, that's Drinking tough beer. life. Drinking, uh, <laughs> it's it's tough life. Life. We have to play guitar. We have to drink uh, beer. Yeah. Change strings. There are so many preparations for <laughs> <it>. <laughs> guitar picks. 
You know, it, 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 it sounds like it's easy free food. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like such a bad life, I tell yeah, it's you. It's a terrible <laughs> life. But it is hard work. Yeah, it's imagine. really hard work. But it's worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah oh, travel yeah. all the way to America. The Caribbean Sea uh, and the boat. Yeah. Hard work, man. <laughs> Not the only, only one doing hard work here. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I guess so, yeah. Well, yeah. back to work. <laughs> <laughs>